So I'm gonna show you guys how I fit all of this in this pack right here. Hey guys, Dakota from Drake. Welcome back to another review. Uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. Usually I stand here in front of the camera and I do product reviews, uh, but today we're gonna do uh, a bag dump video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while because um, I kinda wanna show our viewers and our audience uh, what I carry on around a five to six day uh, backcountry trip. So what you guys see here in front of me is all the gear that I take um, on a backcountry trip. Um, usually our trips are around five to six days. If we're not seeing anything, around day three, day four, we'll back out, we'll find a new spot. So I have everything from the gear I'll wear, food, sleep system, electronics, the weapons I run, uh, the pack I run, and we'll dive all into that. So give or take, all of this will fit in this pack by the end of the video. Uh, I say give or take because like right here, you'll see a spotter and then right over here, you'll see my binoculars. I rarely carry both. Um, if it's a trip where I'm gonna be glassing a lot, um, certain vantage points, I'm gonna carry this. If the timber's thick, not really that much glassing, I'm gonna take my binoculars. In no particular order, I'm just gonna start loading things in the pack um, and I'll go through them slightly. And then, like I said, at the end of the video, it'll all be in this pack. So starting here at the pack, that is gonna carry all this gear for me. Uh, this is gonna be an EXO 4800. Uh, it's the new uh, K3 frame and it's also the born and raised edition. EXO makes two versions of the 4800. They have their standard and they have their born and raised version. Um, I personally went with the born and raised version because it has certain features on this bag that the standard doesn't and it fits, my, uh, fits the way I hunt. So some of the differences are on the sides, uh, on the standard 4800s, you have a long uh, pocket on both sides that you can stuff like tripods and stuff down. Uh, it's not the case with this bag, you're gonna get two zipper pouches on this side. Your water bottle holders are gonna be a little bit shortened. And then on this side, we have a, one big pocket that'll fit a spotter or anything big you wanna put in there. Right here on the belt, I have the uh, k 3 hip belt pouch. Uh, this is, I think, a little bit bigger than their K2, which I like. And then right here on my right side, this is just a Blackhawk Serpa uh, holster. This is gonna carry my Glock 43. So all of this will go in the bag. The only thing I will not show you guys is the camera gear I run. Um, I do personally carry like 20 extra pounds worth of camera gear. Um, now at the end of this video, it's gonna look like this bag is completely stuffed full with no more room, um, but I can expand it more and get my camera gear in there. So starting here on the right, this is gonna be what gets my animal. This is a Matthews Halon 6 with a custom <laughs> paint job I did. Uh, I wanted a buckskin bow. Uh, this was originally camo and I, I rattle canned it. it. Turned out pretty well. Uh, I have a Conquest front stabilizer and then a back kicker. And then for arrows, I'm shooting Pierce 340. They're uh, gold tips with a, uh, gosh, what are the name of those? The Slick Trick Broadheads. Uh, I like these because the broadheads or the uh, blades themselves are replaceable. And I have a bunch of replacement blades in my uh, broadhead box. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have a Glock 43X. Um, this is new for me this year. I, I never carried a pistol um, since I started archery hunting because I was a rifle hunter at one point uh, and there was no need for me to carry a sidearm because I had a rifle. So I carry a Glock 43X. It's gonna go right here in my Serpa. And then I carry two mags. One will go in the, uh, one will go in the gun itself. And then one will go over here in my hip belt. And then for my release, this is just a Scott Archery. Um, I'm not a huge fan of just the hook. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, clamp, but since opening days today, I don't really have time to go down and get another one. This will do the job. For game bags, uh, I just go cheap. I just go Alaskan game bags. This is gonna have four form-fitting 48 quarter bags, and then I have a bag for um, my neck meat. So I usually put my game bags right here in this front stretchy pocket. Usually they'll go here or uh, maybe like a jacket, but that's where my game bags will be most of the time. So right here, this is gonna be my kill kit bag. Um, so it is sitting in a 6 a.m. Uh, like a grab bag. I have five of them uh, all the way between extra large uh, down to extra small. So inside the bag, I have trash bag, gloves, paracord, 
Uh, something new this year for me, something I can't wait to try out. Uh, this is a new product for 2020. This is called uh, the Capra Hunter TI from Goat Knives. Um, I bought it almost as soon as they released, but it's kind of got that um, Havilon scalpel blade at the end. Comes with six of them. Um, super light. Right here in the center, I got two bits. Now, when you buy a Capra Hunter TI, um, you're going to get a whole bunch of bits. So these two bits are what fit my bow. And then a couple of these actually fit some of my tripods. Super stoked to use that. Uh, moving on, I do like to carry a fixed blade. Um, the blades that the uh, goat knives or what Havilons come with, they can break. Um, so I like to have a fixed blade with me. This is just the Benchmade Sheep Hunter. Um, I've skinned a lot of deer. I've skinned a lot of elk with this and it's never, uh, never failed me. I also have, I don't know if I said this yet, I got one, two, three, four, five replaceable blades for that goat knife. Um, and then what the goat knife came with, but I snipped it off, I don't know why I did this. Um, this is gonna be the cord that they use for your D loop, your drop away rest. Um, I didn't realize that's what it was, and I think I cut that off uh, until I started looking more into it, and I was like, oh crap, that's the same cord that they use for D loops. Two more things in my kill bag. I just have some uh, electrical tape and then some flagging tape. My kill bag, I always keep right up here in the hood. Uh, there's gonna be two pockets right up here on top of the hood. This is gonna go in the main, the big one. Oh, and then also, since we're right here, uh, I do have a hydration pack. It's nothing fancy, it was just one I bought off Amazon. Um, that's also new to me. I've always been a, uh, a Nalgene bottle type of guy, but I ran into a problem when I was scouting that I was like, that's gonna come in handy. All right, trekking poles. Uh, these are just Cascade Mountain Techs. Um, again, nothing extremely fancy, nothing extremely expensive. Uh, I've been running these for, I think, two to three years. Uh, I've had to replace a couple of these knobs down here, uh, but for the most part, they've done me very well. Now, I'm not gonna load these yet because there's a couple other things I need to load before I do that. I kind of started in, in an order I'm not used to. Let's start with what goes to the very bottom of my pack. That is gonna be the Outdoor Vitals uh, Stormloft Zero Degree Bag. I did do a review on this. Um, I do not carry it, though, in the carry sack it comes with. Toss that aside. I also have a, uh, somewhere down in here, I also have a uh, micro polyester liner from Outdoor Vitals. Uh, I like to have that in there because uh, I sleep in my gear, so I don't wanna be tracking a bunch of dirt and debris in my bag when I go to bed. So like I said, this will go at the very bottom of my pack. That Stormloft down that they use uh, in this bag, it packs down super small. Looks a little rough, but we'll get there. Uh, right here, this is just a climate tarp. Um, I think it's four by six. Um, this is very cheap, actually. I think I picked it up for only like 12 or 14 bucks off Amazon. This comes in handy for get caught in a rainstorm, uh, you need to put meat down on it, or what I use it for is for my seek out slide, uh, Eolus, it's a floorless shelter. So I'll usually throw this down and I'll throw my pad down on top of it. This will go far right of the bag uh, in one of these small pockets. Uh, it's easy to get to. It'll go there. Like I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be the uh, Seek Outside Eolus. It's a two-man floorless shelter, um, and you're gonna use your trekking poles as the uh, tent poles. And just like my sleeping bag, I, I don't carry this in the bag. It just takes up a little bit more room. So I will take advantage of this big, uh, this big pocket here on the left side of the bag. And this is where I'm gonna keep my tent. Oh boy. Extremely lightweight. That's uh, one of the main reasons why I bought it. But right here on the side of that bag, you got this long zipper pouch. I'll just stuff this down in there. Throw the tent stakes in there as well. So the reason I like having it there um, is that when nighttime falls, I don't have to grab every single thing out of my pack uh, just to set up camp. I can easily just undo this, pull my shelter out. All right, moving along. 
Pillows, pillows are huge to me. Uh, if I don't get a good night's sleep, um, I don't hunt good, can't think good. Um, so sleep is very important. So this is a Teton pillow. This is gonna be just like your pillow at home. Again, I do not carry it in the bag. Um, I know it stuffs up a little bit smaller uh, in the bag, but I usually expand it. It's gonna lay this way in my bag. Um, I just cannot sleep on inflatable pillows. I've tried to get my body uh, to just get used to it, but I cannot. So this gives me a good night's sleep, uh, and this will go right on top of my. Uh, this will go right on top of my sleeping bag. So it's crazy. It already looks like my pack's dang near full, but we're gonna keep going. Next, we'll go uh, my sleeping pad. This is the Outdoor Vitals insulated pad. Um, again, sleep is huge. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different kinds of uh, of pads. I've tried the Climate uh, Static V. Uh, that one's actually pretty good, but I did have a hole in that one, so uh, I went with this one this year. This is going to be new for my 2020 setup, um, and this will go right on top of my pillow in here. Definitely a lot easier to pack the bag when it's not on a demo hook. It's easier to pack the bag down here, but if I have troubles, I'll throw it on the table. All right, let's clear some, uh, let's clear some room up over here. So for gear that I'm gonna wear in, 90% um, of the time or 100% of the time, it's gonna be Canis's Chamois Half Zip. Uh, again, I've done a review on our channel about this uh, or about my camo that I'm wearing this year. This is just a uh, grid fleece uh, base layer. It's a long sleeve half zip with a hood. So like I said, this is gonna be what I'm wearing in uh, when I hit that trailhead. We'll set that over there. As for pants, this is the Alpine Light Pant. Uh, super lightweight pant. Um, it's got a water repellent finish, but it's definitely not going to keep me 100% dry in a rainstorm. Um, but when a rainstorm usually hits, I grab that climate tarp and I hide underneath it. As far as belts go, um, this is just a marsupial stretch web belt. I really like this. Uh, main reason why, it is extremely thin. Um, most guys will know when you got a thick belt on, and you throw that uh, hip belt on, it kind of rubs the wrong way and it'll hurt. For boots, these, uh, these are my pride and joys. They've seen a lot, they have a lot of miles on them, uh, and I'll probably retire them after this year. This is gonna be my fourth season running them. Uh, these are gonna be the Crispy Hunter GTX. It's a 12 inch tall boot. Um, I like having that added ankle, ankle support. Um, but what I have noticed is when I do wanna roll my ankle or my ankle does wanna roll, um, I feel it more in my knees, so I think maybe next year I will go for like maybe a 10 or an 8 inch tall boot, something like the Idaho's um, or the Nevada's, but if these weren't so dang expensive, um, I'd get myself another pair, but I can't have the woman finding out about that. Set those aside. As for gear that's going to go inside my pack, stuff I pack in with me, um, this is going to be a 6am outdoors, I think it's the XL grab bag. Um, inside here uh, is going to be the Altai jacket. This is like my outer layer, um, somewhere between, it's going to be warmer than that base layer and a little bit less warmer than the uh, puffy jacket. Canis' Tar Merino Half Sleeve. Uh, I got two pairs of their Tar Merino Briefs. May throw in one more pair. Um, three pairs of socks and then a go hunt waffle beanie. Uh, I like this beanie a lot. Um, I usually sleep in beanies, keep me nice and warm at night. So that'll all go back in here. Something like that. So this bag will go right here up on top. So I like to point out uh, about the 4800, the new versions. Um, is this horseshoe design. So I kind of picture my bag as a dresser, and then these are like my drawers. Um, so as you can see, I got my sleeping bag, pillow, pad, extra clothes, and then once I roll this top open, we still have a bunch more room um, for the rest of this gear. Like I mentioned earlier about the give or take, uh, if, it's go if I'm going in and it's gonna be really hot, or uh, maybe we're only going in for two days, 
pack in a hammock. For uh, gators, these are just the uh, Outdoor Research gators. These ones are kind of old and they're beaten up, uh, but I'm the type of dude that runs gators year round, um, unless it's freaking 100 degrees, but uh, I like that added protection. Uh, where we go, uh, we have the possibility of running into rattlesnakes, so uh, a little bit added protection, I like. This is gonna, I'm gonna add this to the pile of uh, gear that I wear in. All right, let's go back here. Um, this is gonna be the 6 a.m. Uh, grab bag. This is gonna be the extra small. This is gonna be my med kit. Um, now, most guys have a bigger med kit. Um, I pack pretty light uh, med kit wise. I have a bunch of stuff in here. I got band-aids, gauze, antiseptic towelette. Um, I got these, uh, these are for like, if you bite your lip out there, you get a canker sore like on your lip. Um, you take this little, it looks like a little pill and you just stick it on that canker sore and then it creates this like dome over that canker sore. Um, so you can eat and drink and do whatever. Uh, super glue, just in case Brandon cuts his finger off. Uh, Neosporin, cold remedy, uh, nasal swab, couple pills, uh, NyQuil, Q-tips, emergency. I got it all. I'm ready to rock and roll. This will go right up here in the big zipper of the hood. Uh, this will also go right next to my uh, kill kit bag. So if Brandon does more than just chopping off his finger um, and he breaks his leg and we're six miles, seven miles back there, uh, this is when this little puppy right here uh, will come in handy. This is a Garmin InReach Mini. I bought this about two years ago um, and this is probably my most valued possession um, out of all this on the table. It has an SOS button um, so we can call Life Flight, we can drop coordinates. I run the expedition plan so I'm going to get unlimited text messages, um, weather updates and then I don't use the navigation on this screen. I use it through the EarthMate app um, and the EarthMate app is very, very um, up to date and it's very accurate. Um, I've had troubles with Onyx sometimes um, where Onyx says I'm going here and I know for a fact uh, where I need to go is here. Um, so I can always rely on that EarthMate app um, if Onyx fails or, or is just not loading or something. And then lastly, uh, I am a father of this year so um, I can check in on the woman, I can check in on my boy um, and see how they're doing. This gives the woman a peace of mind uh, when I have no service and it also gives me a peace of mind um, and I can reach home if I want to. This I will put over here because I'll cover my optics in a little bit. So this was the steel of the century. Uh, this is a Garmin Instinct watch. They go for like 250 bucks. I ended up getting it in brand new condition off Facebook market uh, for $50. So. Uh, I couldn't pass up that deal. I've tried other watches in the past, Apple watches, uh, cheap sporting good watches. Um, I've always had trouble with battery or especially with the Apple watch. I was too scared to get it dirty because how expensive and uh, clean it looked, but 100% um, waterproof. It holds a charge forever um, and then connects to my phone just like the uh, InReach Mini does. And then while we're on the topic of electronics, uh, I carry two Goal Zero Flip Banks. This one's a Goal Zero Flip 12, uh, and this one right here is the Flip 10. Uh, these will charge your phone three to four times. Um, I usually sleep with one of them because my phone seems to die overnight. Um, so I usually plug this in at nighttime. Super small so I can fit it in the pocket of my uh, the pants I'm wearing, or in this case I can stick it in between one of the baffles on my sleeping bag. So I carry two of those. I usually put this in one of these pockets down here. Another little cool gadget I picked up this year. This is a Blavor. Got it off Amazon. Um, this is just a solar charger. So uh, it's got a, two lights down here. Up here, you got your outputs. Um, right here on the back, it's wireless charging. So if I'm glassing, I can just put my phone right here and it'll charge. Um, this is what I will use to charge um, my flip banks. That'll also go in one of these pockets down here. So I said I wasn't gonna get into electronics, um, but this one's kind of inevitable because there are some things in here I do need to show you guys. Um, this is just another 6 a.m. outdoor grab bag. Um, this is gonna have batteries for the cameras. Uh, it's gonna have chargers, so I have an iPhone charger. Uh, I have chargers that'll plug from here into my Garmin. I got chargers that'll plug from um, 
that solar charger to the flip banks. So, and then a couple uh, like AA batteries, AAA batteries, and then a nine volt for my uh, road mic. That'll also go my lid. So now there's three of those uh, 6 a.m. grab bags up there. This lightweight holds uh, eight SD cards. I keep this handy. This will go right here uh, in my hip belt pouch. So for my headlamp, this is just an Actic Core uh, from Petzl. Uh, what I really like is the wideness of this. So when I'm walking down a trailhead at night, I like to see all of this instead of all my light focused on the trail. Um, the main beam that shines in front of you is plenty bright, but I do like to see what's a little bit out there, especially in the dark, because I'm a little scaredy cat. Biggest thing I like about it, if you pop this off, it has a uh, battery inside that you can recharge. And while this is recharging, you can go ahead and throw uh, three AAA batteries in there. This, again, something I like to keep handy. This will go right here in that hip belt pouch. That's another good reason about that hip belt pouch. It's so big, you can stuff so much things in there. All right, let's go uh, camp kitchen. Right here, I have a Jetboil Zip without a lid. Uh, thanks to whoever stole the lid at Sporson's Warehouse because I got this for like 50 bucks. Um, I like the mini version. I've had tall versions, big versions, um, and I have used the Zip before. It's done me well. You can't go wrong with a Jetboil. Inside the jet boil, um, obviously you got the stove and stuff, but I keep this little uh, hand towel, it's from TCT. Um, now, this is something I, one of those luxury items that you really probably don't need, but uh, there has been cases where we go up to a creek, um, maybe soak our heads in, maybe want to rinse our faces off. It's nice to just have a towel laying around other than your shirt um, to wash your face with. Plus, packs down really small. I can fit it in here um, so I could, you don't have to listen to that rattle in your pack. Um, super handy. It's one of those little luxury items. This will go right up top, right on top of that, uh, that last 6 a.m. bag. As for water filtration, uh, this is just an MSR trail shot. Um, something I've been wanting to try out for a while. It's got good reviews on it. Um, I'm so used to the pump ones, um, and I hadn't had any problems with the pump ones. Um, but those pumps usually run a little bit more expensive. Uh, this is just uh, a bulb feature, so that end will go in your dirty water, and then all you do is just pump. Gives you a good forearm workout. Uh, <laughs> Brandon says I need to lift the weights or hit the gym because uh, I was complaining last time because we pumped like four Nalgene bottles up at one time. This will go on the top, very top pocket of uh, my lid, because I said there's two. Um, again, all comes back to uh, availability to grab or access to grab. That's gonna be super easy for uh, maybe someone I'm hunting with to just go ahead and grab it. I can reach back there and grab it. Uh, so it's nice to have that readily available. Butane for the stove. We'll go right next to it. Uh, this, another little luxury item. It's super lightweight. This is just a GSI mug. Um, this is going to be for coffee in the morning. I'm a coffee drinker. I got to have coffee in the morning. If I don't have coffee in the morning, uh, you're going to have one crabby hunting partner. So um, doesn't take up very much room in the, in the pack. Super lightweight. Um, probably one of those things you don't need, um, but I don't mind carrying a little bit extra, uh, such as luxury items, because um, it's just nice to have these in the outdoors uh, when all your buddies are drinking coffee out of their little silicone cups or something. This will also go right next to that butane. So this is going to be a uh, miscellaneous bag. This is going to have some pyro putty. This is new for me this year. Um, I'm terrible at starting fires. I know, right? Some outdoorsman I am. Uh, so I went and got some pyro putty, teepee, a lighter, and then some noisy carabiners that I'm definitely going to have to do something about because that definitely, I can hear that in the pack. Uh, the carabiners are going to be for we get an elk down, we get a deer down, we get an animal down, uh, and we need to hoist those in the trees. On most game bags, um, they have a loop. We can hook those to the loop, hook this into some paracord, and hoist those up. But for now, I'll just put these back in that little grab bag, and then I will put this right in here. 
Don't laugh at me, I know it's redundant to put a bag inside a bag, but that's just how I roll. And to put the final touches on my hip belt pouch, um, I just have three calls. Um, sometimes I keep them in my pockets, um, but most of the time they're gonna be in my hip belt pouch. This is just a Rocky Mountain uh, game call. This is the Black Magic, great for bugles. Um, this is a Bro Amp Read from Phelps, uh, and same with this one. So I kind of live my motto of, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So um, these did me great last year, so there's no point for me to go out and buy new ones. Uh, these work great for both cow calls and bugling. And then lastly, some good old lip repair, cooling relief. Uh, I like to have this, especially when I'm glassing. Uh, that wind can pick up and I can chap your lips real quick. These will also go in my hip belt pouch. And then now we can finally go ahead uh, and tighten that up. Oh, I forgot to finish my uh, camp kitchen. I was moving along too fast. Uh, so we'll start here, I guess. This is just a Sea to Summit long spoon. Um, now I got this when, when we're eating mountain houses. Uh, that's usually our dinners. Um, I used to do three a day for like five to six days. Um, and then at the end of the sixth day, I couldn't get my ring off because of all the sodium. So I just narrow it down to uh, how many days we're out there is how many mountain house meals I'll, I'll pack. So five days will be, uh, will be five meals and I only eat those for dinner. So like I said, I got these four mountain houses, but now I really don't need it because um, I have a Alpine Mountain gear. It's a silicone bowl. Now I know I made that comment about silicone coffee cups, so don't hate me. Um, but this is just a silicone bowl. So what I'll do is I'll take my mountain house after it's done and I'll dump it in here. And it is so much easier to eat your food this way um, than it is out of that bag. And you don't have to risk getting the food all over your hands. Um, and then take a little bit of water, super easy to rinse out, collapses down, and you're ready to go again. These two items will go right here on the top pocket of the two that come on the side. Again, it all comes down to how easy it is to get out for me when I need it. So that'll fill, so that pocket's full, that pocket's full, big pocket over here's full. Again, jumping the gun too fast. Forgot to mention this. Uh, this is going to be my puffy jacket. So, give or take, I may not have this uh, or I may have it. Just depends on the weather. Um, I know Brandon uses it as a pillow, so he always brings it. Um, but on the trip that we're going here uh, in two days, one of the days it is calling for rain um, and low temperatures in the 60s. Now, I know that's not extremely cold, but um, at nighttime, especially in the mountains, that temperature seems to be a lot lower. Um, so I'm gonna pack this for this trip. This is gonna go right up top. But first, let me go ahead and close this bag up because that's gonna make packing a lot easier. All right, so that will go right on top, uh, right next to that jet boil, that butane, uh, and that GSI mug. It's gonna fit right there she's getting full all right towards the bottom uh, another little luxury item this weighs nothing um, a packet of top ramen weighs more than this this is just an easy seat from Thermarest. Uh, one of the things that I get crap on from the boys most of the time so I use this when we're glassing uh, when you get out of your tent maybe you have some dew on the ground you don't want to get your butt wet uh, you can throw this over a log and sit on it um, I always tend to get the last laugh um, while they're sitting there with wet butts um, or their butts cramping up from sitting so long. I'm nice and cozy with this. This will just go right at the bottom of my pack. Won't go in the pack, but EXO offers two of these. Uh, it's like where a tent would go maybe, um, but my tent's inside the bag. So this will just sit right here at the bottom. I'll tighten that down so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, okay, another little bag. This is gonna have my toothpaste, toothbrush. It's gonna have some allergy medicine. I always have bad allergies. Um, depends on where I go. Sometimes it hits me hard, sometimes I don't get it at all. Um, so I just bring some Zizol. Um, inside this, other than that stuff I already named, I got some uh, floss picks. Um, 
it's nice to have. I always like pop one of these in when I'm glassing. I'll either chew on it, pick my teeth, or just do something. Um, and especially in the mornings, those are nice. And then lastly, don't make fun of me. Um, another one of those things I get crap for. Uh, this is just a cuticle clipper or a cuticle trimmer. Um, I hate having hangnails. Um, my hands get dry out there, my cuticles start to crack. Um, so if we're just sitting around, I'll just trim my cuticles up. I know, don't call me girly. This will go at the top in my hood, and that should be the last thing that goes in my hood. I can go ahead and flip that back. All right, bugle tube, Phelps game calls. Can't go wrong with it. I've had this for uh, quite some time. I had like three to four at one point. I won a couple at the uh, Full Jaw Film Tour. I uh, got rid of them, gave some away to the boys, but um, had this one for a while. So my only complaint with this bag, um, and it's th it, this bag has it, not the standard 48, uh, is the water bottle pouches on the side. They're not as deep. So um, I know Born and Raised discussed this in one of their comparison videos. Um, it just suits their style of hunting. Um, and they don't, probably don't really care about that, but um, I usually carry my bugle tube on my left side because that's the, that's the hand I reach for it. Um, so what I do have to do with this now is buckle it in, which is annoying, but um, I usually hunt with a buddy uh, or a group, so um, for them just to grab it for me or I can reach back and, and make a little bit more noise and grab it out, um, it's not that hard. So this will go in on the left side and then I will buckle it in with these two top straps. Nalgene bottle, uh, this is just a go hunt Nalgene bottle. This is gonna be like my dirty water reservoir, if that makes sense. So I already got clean water in my hydration pack. If we come across a creek, uh, I'll pump fresh water into my hydration pack. Uh, maybe I'll pump fresh water into here, or if we're in a hurry, I'll just scoop up a bunch of water in this and filter it out later. Um, this is gonna sit on my cross strap once I buckle this up. So the last thing that'll go uh, inside this bag, yeah, last thing that'll go inside that bag uh, is gonna be my food bag. Now I always have this at the top because I'm always hungry and I'm always reaching for it. This is just another 6 a.m. outdoor grab bag. Um, right now, it's, it's got some, I, I can put a lot more in here because uh, these do stretch. Um, I only got one mountain house in here, just some granola bars, some top ramen. Uh, for the bag dump, I wasn't going to cover food um, because that would take forever, uh, but I do ratio it out day by day, um, and I try to switch the meals up so I'm not eating the same meal every single day. Um, so I'll throw a couple beef top robins, a couple chickens, always have a different mountain house, um, lots of beef jerky, you name it, granola bars, cookies, I got all of it. So like I said, this bag will be a little bit bigger, but it's going to fit right here at the top. And then I can, and I still have a whole foot to go. So that's what I mentioned earlier about my camera gear and the extra 20 pounds that I have. Um, I do have another big camera bag that'll go on top of this as well. So for now, I'll just roll this down, tighten that up, I'll flip this lid back over. Okay, so on the right side of the bag, I will put my trekking poles, always handle down. Don't pull a Trevor and poke holes through the bottom of your buddy's XO. Um, so handles down. These I will also strap in. Let's see, Nalgene bottle will go across one of these straps right here. So a lot of you are probably thinking that that's probably really annoying to have there bouncing. Um, but it's not that bad when this is full. Um, it's when it's not full and it's empty, this thing just bounces around. So I always try to make sure that's full. Make sure that's tight. Make sure that's tight. Now it's starting to look like a hunting pack. All right, we're almost there. Lastly, optics. So this is the marsupial gear bino harness. Uh, I have it paired with a range finder pouch and then a zippered pouch. The zippered pouch uh, usually holds our vlog camera. Um, sometimes I put it here, sometimes I put it on my hip belt uh, next to my pistol. Um, but it's empty right now. I'll find something uh, that 
I'll put in there. As for the inside, since this is a, one of the newer versions, uh, it doesn't have the enclosed sides like the ones that just got released, uh, but it does have the fleece lining inside. So um, when you're sliding your binoculars in and out, it's not making that, uh, that zip noise. As for the optics on the inside, uh, I'm running a pair of Vortex Vulture 15 by 56 HDs. Um, they're massive, they're very big, they're very bulky, um, but they're great for glassing, which we do 90% of the time. Earlier in the video, I mentioned give and take. Um, sometimes I'll take this um, with me if I'm gonna be glassing a lot farther, um, but most of the time I don't need this and I'll just carry these. As far as my rangefinder goes, um, I have a Vortex Impact 1000. Um, I know I don't need a thousand yards for archery hunting, but um, it was the same price as if I was to go for the 850, um, so I couldn't pass that up. I did have the Ranger at one point. Uh, I like the Ranger a lot better than this one, uh, a little bit faster, um, and I just like the feel of it in my hand. I pair that with a large uh, marsupial rangefinder tether. Um, this is also nice because I can range, drop it, uh, and don't have to worry about losing it like I did that Ranger. On the side of my uh, rangefinder pouch, I have the uh, marsupial spuds lens cloth. Um, this is nice to have because I do carry another one of these, but I keep it in my camera bag, um, which is inside the bag. So if I do need to clean my optics, I have one readily available right here. So marsupials come with two pouches on the side. Um, I'm gonna have my breeze squeeze in this one. And then um, finally, I can put my Garmin inReach right here on the side. And that's usually how I walk around with it. Uh, and then also right here on the back, you got a phone holder, but I've also noticed um, when this is to my chest and I got that bulky case on my iPhone, it doesn't fit really that tight. So I'll sometimes put um, a, a reed back here. And then lastly, um, sometimes I'll take it, sometimes I won't, like I said before. Um, it all depends on the hunt that we do. If we're gonna be up top, uh, glassing down into basins and stuff. Um, I will take this. Um, those 15 by 56 will do the job, but if we want to see a little bit farther, um, I'll use this. I think it's a 20 by 60. Um, it's got great HD glass. It's nothing fancy. It's not your uh, it's not your Vortex razors or or nothing like that, but it does the job. It's got a sun guard. Uh, you got your zoom features. I have noticed the, and it might be the same for all glass. Uh, the farther I zoom this thing in, the, the darker it gets, like the, the light dims, um, and you can't see as good, but I uh, usually pair it with a phone scope, but since I got a new iPhone, I haven't updated that phone scope. This sits on top of a Vanguard tripod. Um, I've had this tripod for a couple years. Uh, I'm probably due for another one. Uh, the legs are getting a little rusty, hard to slide in and out, but uh, it's got a decent fluid head. Uh, the only downfall, it's pretty dang heavy. I hate carrying it, but um, I, I go with a couple buddies that don't mind taking it, so more to them. So I'm not gonna put this on my pack right now. Uh, I'll set it aside, I'll put it in my tote. Uh, for the most part, that is what my pack is gonna look like. Um, I usually have a camera in this hand because uh, I'm filming most of the time, but when I do get the chance to hunt, uh, I'll pass the camera off and I will take this off the back of my pack because this will usually sit right there and then we'll start hunting. All right, and that is my bag dump for 2020. Um, I've always wanted to do a bag dump. It's been on the list for a while. Uh, I just never got around to it, but uh, I know some of our viewers were curious of what we take, so I hope that little rundown I gave you uh, answers some of those questions. So if you're watching this video right now, it is August 29th. That is opening day here in Oregon. Sadly, I have to work and some of the other boys do, but we're gonna take off on the 30th and we're gonna run through the 7th. Uh, and then we also have a big trip, a 10 day uh, planned towards the end of September so we can get into that rut. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I figured guys who are planning their trips for September uh, towards the tail end, they're still gonna have time to see what other hunters are taking uh, and putting in their packs. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you like the content that we put out on this channel and you like videos like this, um, subscribe. We're on our journey to 1500 subscribers. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up button because um, we're looking forward to doing more stuff like this. If you guys want to see our most recent review, I will leave a link to that right here. If you want to hit that subscribe button a little bit faster, I will leave a subscribe button right here. And like always, thank you for tuning into another video.